And so what is what is the real story of or history of crus crusades? Um, oh, crusades! So yeah, yeah we, we get we get to learn that at um, at school, and also someone mentioned in the chat they learned that as part of the history in British Museum. So they've got two rooms, all about like. Islam and its history, but mainly focused on like dress, all those kind of things. You just get out that room by thinking Islam is very peaceful, and then you walk through the room. It's all about crusades. Uh, the message is very clear there. So, what is the real history of that? The real history of the Crusades goes back to the time of the Caliph Al Hakim, at the beginning of the 11th century. Yes, the first Crusade began in 1095, but in around 10. Oh, nine. So almost a hundred years before that, Al Hakim destroys the Church of the Holy Sepulchre uh, in Jerusalem. And he also levels a lot of other churches in the area. And so the Christians are put at a terrible, through a terrible persecution at this time. Also, Christian pilgrims begin to be attacked kidnapped, enslaved, forced to convert, or killed. So that's that's the beginning of the 11th century. Then in 1071, there was a Roman emperor, Romanos, and he led his army. He was not a very good emperor. He was not a very wise individual. And he wanted military glory, but he did not have military acumen. So he led the Roman army out into eastern Anatolia, what is now Turkey. And this was the heartland of the Roman Empire. This was this area that is now Turkey today was the breadbasket and the place where soldiers were recruited and the, the, uh, the heartland of the Roman Empire. So he went out to the eastern areas of it and engaged the Muslims in battle at a town called Manzikert in 1071 and suffered a crushing defeat. And he was captured. He became the second Roman emperor in the history of the Roman Empire to be captured by foreign forces. And he was captured by, who was it? Um, Alp Arslan. Of course. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. I know Arbaslan. Yeah. So he captures Romanos and he asks him. He 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 he's he likes to talk to him and they talk every day. And he says to Romanos one day, What would you do if you had captured me? And Romanos says to Alp Arslan, I probably would have killed you. And Alp Arslan says, I am not going to do that. I'm going to do something even worse. I'm going to set you free. Because he knows that he's destroyed the Roman Empire, Romanos, essentially, yeah. and he's going to suffer for it. And he goes home, and indeed, he's killed, deposed and killed, and that's the end of him. But the disaster, the, the destruction of the Roman army at Manzikert leaves all of Anatolia open to the Ottomans, and they began to take it. Now, they didn't consolidate this until the 20th century, as a matter of fact, when the last remnants, up, except for a very tiny group, but the last Christian communities in Anatolia were forcibly expelled. That's why I'm here now. Uh, because my grandparents were exiled from Turkey in the beginning of the 20th century. So otherwise I might've met you over there. I don't know. But uh, in any case, <laughs> the, <laughs> you, you be... Roman empire was deeply imperiled and the Muslims were advancing through Asia Minor and the Roman emperor Alexios Komnenos appealed for help to the West and asked Pope Urban II to send troops because he couldn't recruit troops, you see. He got his troops in the past from Anatolia. But now Anatolia was largely under the control of the Muslims. So he couldn't even recruit troops to fight back and win it back. 
So he went to, he, he, he appealed to the Pope and the Pope called for the crusade in the year 1095. Now, the whole thing got out of hand in various ways. The first people who arrived were a bunch of children and priests and monks and things like that, uh, and they were massacred by the Muslims. But then the real soldiers arrived, and they began to fight back against the Muslims. Now, in the middle of this, they had disputes with the Emperor Alexios, and so it became not a matter of winning back the land that the Romans had lost. It became a matter of winning back the Holy Land. But it was indeed a reconquest that was attempted. It was an attempt to drive back the Muslim invaders. And so people have lost that idea now, and they, they portray it as some kind of a gratuitous attack against the Muslims who were peacefully minding their own business. Actually, the Muslims were advancing and it was in order to stop their advance and to protect the Christian pilgrims to the Holy Land that the Crusaders came. So that's like very different narrative than what I was told and what I heard. You are telling me in beginning of 11th century as Christian persecution um, become higher, higher, Christians felt there is a response to, there is a need for respond. And then therefore they were just responding to what Muslims are doing to the Christians as well as how Muslims are conquering the lands. Yes, precisely. That's exactly it. That's very different than what we hear and what we, what we kind of learn. And that went for a couple of centuries, correct? Yeah, the Crusaders took Jerusalem in 1099 and established Crusader kingdoms. One of them was called Utramer, and that was the longest lasting. And they were, uh, they took Antioch as well, and the area of the Holy Land. And they held it until 1291. And then in 1291, the last Crusader kingdom was destroyed, and the Muslims reasserted their control over the whole area. But the Christians had been there before the Muslims, before the Muslim conquest. The Muslims conquered them and were advancing. The Christians took a small portion back during the Crusades and then lost that. But the Crusades are very important for a number of reasons, and one of them is that there were incursions into Europe from the 7th century until the 11th, and then again starting in the 13th. But for the 200 years that the Crusaders were in the Holy Land, there were no jihads into Europe. And so it may be that the Crusaders saved Europe. I would also say the Romans, the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire saved Europe because they stood as a wall between the jihadis and the Europeans for so many centuries, but also the Crusaders saved Europe because they, if they had not had those 200 years, then certainly the jihadis would have defeated the Romans earlier than they actually did and driven into Europe, and probably all of Europe would have been Islamized. 